My name is Philip Olatinwo, a final level student of the Department of Veterinary Medicine, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, University of Bado. On November 7, 2015, there is this fracas between residents of Queen Idia Hall and uh, residents of Inam De Azikwe Hall, which I'm one. Uh, the tradition we have in University of Badon is a kind of tradition whereby if you gain admission into the university, you'll be posted into a particular hall of residence. Though accommodation is not guaranteed throughout your stay in the university, but you get accommodation in your first year and your final year. So that particular day, I was going to my residence outside the university and getting to uh, Bats Road of the university where Queen Idia was located. I saw multitude and as a humanitarian and a concerned Nigerian, I moved close to find out what was happening. But on getting to the scene, I found out that there was this purported story that uh, residents of Inamde Azikwe Hall participated in disruption of dinner party organized by Queen Hidia Hall. And uh, on getting to the location, though there was fracas, there was a uh, distortion of peace and order, but at a particular point, there was calmness. So I moved close and asked people around, oh, what's happening here? They said people from Inamde Azikwe Hall participated in disruption of the dinner party organized by Queen Idia Hall. But I told them I'm a member of Inamde Azikwe Hall. That's on my ID card, I have Inamde Azikwe Hall as my hall of residence. After seeing that, these people picked me up that, oh, so far I'm a member of Inamde Azikwe Hall, which I'm not staying there currently. And uh, the people that came for the disruption are members of Inamde Azikwe Hall. The next thing they did was to lock me up illegally, which is against all laid down rules. And uh, when the university administrator came, they gave them stories that, oh, I was one of the people that participated in the disruption. Who took you and locked you up? Oh, these are postgraduate students. And during the process of picking me up and uh, locking me up illegally, they used the opportunity to rob me of my wallet and they broke the screen of my phone. So everything started along the line and I reported this to the chief security officer of the university, which I was given the uh, assurance that I'm going to get my wallet back and I'm going to get my phone repaired. But unfortunately, in 2016, uh, this investigation panel called me to appear and explain what happened. Obviously, I appeared and I explained what happened, that oh, I was going on my own and uh, some set of students picked me up because I'm a member of a particular hall that was accused of perpetrating violence. Now, after picking me up, that particular day and I appeared before the investigation panel. I tendered all my pieces of evidence, the phone that was uh, broken and the reports of the wallet. My statement of account showing my withdrawal into that wallet that they took that particular day. I brought witnesses, people I was with before I left that particular place uh, for my residential area where, when I was picked up during the process of going to my residential area. and. Uh, I even brought, uh, what was it called, a medical report. Because after I was locked up illegally, I was, you know, I was assaulted and I had to just go to the university health center. I brought the medical reports. All the members of the panel told me was that everything I was saying was something I have to hurt. But I don't believe that. I was not given fairing. That was sometime in July 2016. And later, in, uh, on September 15, 2016, I received the query that I should, uh, that a, uh, an allegation of gross misconduct was leveled against me as being part of the members of Inamde Azikwe Hall that participated in the disruption of dinner party organized by Queen Idia Hall. I responded to this allegation, stating all the things I know, and attaching documents and pieces of evidence. but. When I appeared before the Student Disciplinary Committee jointly committed offenses on the 19th of October 2016, I was not given fair hearing. They never allowed me to talk. The documents I brought before them to prove my innocence, they never allowed me to tender all these documents. The witnesses I brought to prove my innocence, they never allowed me to present these witnesses. And after they never allowed me to present witnesses and documents to prove my innocence, which is in accordance with the uh, disciplinary procedure of the university, as stated in its student information handbook, I demanded that, okay, fine, you are not allowing me to prove myself, my innocence, then fine, you should prove me guilty. Bringing people that picked me up that particular day, if I was found with any 
instruments or any weapons that is related with the disruption of the dinner. Bring these people, they should come and give the accounts of what actually happened that particular day, whether I just told them I'm a member of Inamde Azikweho and they assumed erroneously that, oh, he participated in the disruption. So later when I got a letter that should appear before the Central Student Disciplinary Committee on March 7, March 6, 2017, which was chaired by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Badon, Professor Ibeli Dowola Inka. I appeared before the said panel and I told them that they should prove me guilty. But uh, the chairman of the first committee that I faced uh, raised an observation that I was arrogant, that uh, I, told them, I told him to prove me guilty. And uh, I had to affirm my standards. I presented documents, witnesses, and I was not allowed to tender the documents. Neither was I allowed to present these witnesses to prove my innocence. Then I was left with no other choice than to tell the members of the panel to prove me guilty of the allegation level against me. But saying this again was uh, another uh, thing that caused problems for the university or uh, members of the university authorities. They felt I was rude because I told them the right thing. And uh, the, there is this uh, academic arrogancy whereby the people that know more don't really want people that don't have a certificate that they do have with them to tell them what's right, even when they are wrong. So after saying this, the recommendation of uh, the first panel that I faced was to give me uh, a resignation of two semesters. And I need to state this, that when the allegation was read to me, it was allegation of disruption of dinner party organized by Queen Idia Hall. It was no allegation of being rude or anything. So even if along the way I was rude, in which I was never rude to any administrator of the university, if, even if I was rude, the disciplinary procedure is that all other cases of gross misconduct should be referred to the deputy registrar students, which will now write to me to write a, a defense with regards to that allegation. But that particular day, there was violation of fairing. They brought new charges that I was not even told initially. And it is a constitutional right that anybody that is being charged with any allegation should be communicated to in a language that he or she understands. I was communicated to that uh, I participated in disruption of dinner, but the letter I got, uh, the notification of the decision of the vice chancellor, it was stated that I was rude, in which I was not communicated earlier. So it was after the investigation and everything I injected being rude and being arrogant, which was not even true because they never carried out any investigation. I feel that the rots in the system in the education sector, the growth in every sector of this country, we need to survive together. It is because uh, we have leaders in this nation that uh, whenever they are sick, they travel abroad to receive treatment. That's why the Vice Chancellor of the University of Badon will not allow his children to come to the University of Badon because he never believed in the system. If a person did not believe in a system, if he believes that the system will not work, then why is the person in the system? Why, why is it the Vice Chancellor of the University of Badon when he knows that the University of Badon will not work? It's obvious that he's aware that the university system is bad. Nothing is working in the University of Badon. That is why he sent his own children to school outside the country. So if he believes in the system, then he should bring his children back to the system. But what I want from the public it's just that I need to get back to the university. I'm not doing anything outside the university and I'm going to be like in, be constituting a nuisance in the community if I don't get back to the university. And uh, the point is that an injustice uh, anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That's according to Martin Luther King. So we need to always uh, you know, stand for people that have been victimized in various campuses because that's the normal instrument the university authorities use to get students out of university. And it's high time we stopped this fraudulent acts and uh, these autocratic weapons of the university.